What is going on everyone? My name is Josh Rozepka and today I have a very quick video about air and breathing. The first thing that I like to talk about is negative air and then the second one is about breathing more often. So negative air, every single one of us is guilty uh, at some point in time of playing on negative air. And what do I mean when I say negative air? That is the air that you've gotta squeeze out when you're running out of air and you're just squeezing out a little bit more air, right? So everyone right now, take a nice big full breath and then exhale. <sighs> nice relaxed exhale, right? <sighs> and then squeeze out a little more air. <sighs> that is negative air. That is the air that we don't wanna be playing on. That's the air that we that we use when we get to the end of a phrase and we've got a long note that we're holding and uh, we didn't breathe it when we should have. We missed a breath or we didn't take as big of a breath as we needed to have and we're trying to squeeze this note out. And there are two negative things that happen in that moment. The first one is if we are thinking about squeezing out air, if we're thinking about, I need to get this air out, I need to make it to the end of the note, our body's telling us, it's saying to us, breathe, breathe, you need more air. And we're just focused and trying to make it and survive to the end of the phrase. Odds are we are not thinking about the music. We are not thinking about intonation. We're not thinking about sound. We're not thinking about blending with the rest of the ensemble or with our section. We're not thinking about time. All of that is secondary to us thinking, I gotta make it to the end of the note. And we don't wanna put ourselves in that situation. It's gonna interrupt the flow of music and we never wanna do that. And think about it like this. When your body is telling you that you need to breathe, it's not because you're running out of air, it's because you already ran out of air. It's exactly the same as, as when your coach or doctor or whomever says to you, if it feels like you need to take a drink, if you feel thirsty, then you're already dehydrated. Your body tells you that you're dehydrated by giving you the sensation of thirst. Well, your body is giving you that, that same signal when you're playing on negative air. You're trying to squeeze out a little bit more air and your body's saying, breathe. It's not because you're about to run out of air, it's because you've already ran out of air. So I want you to keep that in mind. It's very important uh, just for us to be able to play more musically and to be more in the music. The second thing is, when we are squeezing this air out, we're trying to get to the end of a phrase, well, we are just introducing tension. Our body is tightening up and, and, and our chops are tightening up and all kinds of things are going wrong. And what do you think is gonna happen the next time that you breathe in? Your body's all tense. You're gonna be breathing into a tense body. Uh, odds are you're not gonna be taking a big, full, relaxed breath. You're gonna be breathing maybe uh, two thirds of a breath, what you normally would have because your body has all this excess tension in it. And you're gonna carry that tension with you in your playing until you've got like a meaningful rest, until you've got two, three, four measures where you can really kind of relax and shake it all out. So those are the two biggies, all right? We are not thinking about music and then we're introducing tension. So we want to make sure that we aren't playing on negative air. Now, how do we make sure that we don't do that? It's pretty simple, breathe more often. When you've got a piece of music and there are certain sections where it feels like you're playing on negative air, like you're running out of air, I want you to take note, mark it down in your part, then go back, go back a measure, go back two measures, find a spot that you could breathe. Find a spot that makes sense musically where you can sneak in a quick little breath. This brings me to uh, the two different ways that you can think about breathing. And I like to use an analogy uh, like you're driving a car and you're filling up your gas tank. So imagine you're driving, you fill up your gas tank uh, all the way to full and you drive and drive and drive and drive and drive and drive and drive all the way until it's just about empty and then you need to find a gas station. You gotta find one, that is your big priority. It doesn't matter where you're going, it doesn't matter what you're doing, you've got to find a gas station, otherwise you're gonna run out of gas. Now here is the second way. Fill your car up all the way to full, and then you drive and drive and drive, and once you get to that half a tank, once you've used up half of your gasoline, well, you find a gas station that's on your way. Wherever you're going, you just make a quick little stop, and then you top it off and you're never gonna run out of gas. You're never gonna worry that you're running out of gas. You're never gonna put yourself in the position that you may run out of gas. It is exactly the same with playing the trumpet. Breathe more often. You don't have to take a big breath and then play the whole phrase on one breath. 
take a big breath and then play a little bit. And then when there's a spot that you can breathe, even if it doesn't feel like you need to breathe, just top it off. Take a little quick breath there and then keep going. And when you get to that next spot, top it off. Take another little, a little sip. It's not gonna hurt you. And odds are it's just gonna actually make things better. So I want you to think about that and consider it. If you're used to playing on negative air, uh, I promise you, if you start breathing more often, you're gonna find that everything is just gonna get easier. And if you are breathing on negative air, now you know some things that you can do uh, to help fix that. Really, it's just that simple. When you find that you're in that spot where you're running out of air, go back a measure, go back two measures, and then find a little, a little rest, a little spot that you can take a little sip. And if you're taking these little bits of air the whole time, odds are you're never going to run out of air. You're not gonna be put in that situation. Unless you find a piece of music that's just not written very well and you need to hold a note forever. But if it's an ensemble, then you may be able to stagger your breathing and you're gonna be okay. So I hope that this helps you. And if it does, please write down in the comment. I love hearing from all of you. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, the best way that you can support this channel is by hitting that like button and the subscribe button. It really makes a very, very big difference. Uh, I wanna thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.